Hello there! If you're looking or thinking about uh, starting a plasma cutter, CNC plasma cutter, CNC mill, etc. and you're not sure which board to go for, I highly suggest watching this video. Because I've spent a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of headaches trying to do various things, various methods, various boards. And I think I found the solution. And this fl a solution I found is what's called Fluid NC. You can get a board for about $60. It's all uh, web interface, so you can have a tablet, do it off your phone, whatever. You don't need a big computer or anything else. You just do it on your phone. Very nice and very easy. If you want to, you can connect via USB, but otherwise it's very great. So I want to first say which boards I've tried already. So I've tried a breakout board, a parallel breakout board. I've tried Gerbil uh, off a, you know, our Arduino board. I've tried a Ethernet NVMe, or I forgot the name of these boards, but you're able to buy them online. Again, they either work for a Mach 3, but what I did with this thing was actually uh, updated the firmware in order for it to run Linux CNC. Ended up not working. Um, I've tried a Raspberry Pi. Uh, as you see, I've used this big computer and I've got this small uh, mini computer. And I also have a $150 board uh, over Ethernet uh, CNC controller for Linux CNC on my CNC mill. And again, I've tried all these methods and I think FluidNC is the way to go. And let me explain why. So the first issue with uh, Gerbil, that was the first, very first thing I tried. And the issue with that and plasma cutting is that the arcs and, you know, because you're plasma cutting and it creates arcs, high frequency interference, and it just messes with the USB ports. You'll get disconnections, bing, 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 and, you know, that just... It does not work. Gerbil does not work with plasma cutters. Uh, you're able to get some plasma cutters. I did notice that with my new plasma cutter, I don't have that issue. But still, it's not a reliable thing. An over USB connection is a terrible, terrible way to run a CNC machine. And I've had many instances where I'd send a run or a command and it wouldn't stop. It just keep going. Obviously, again, with a CNC machine, that's dangerous. Accidents can happen very easily. So that's when I switched over to this parallel board because this parallel board, it uses this type of connection and it's a lot better than USB. Uh, the problem with this connection is you're gonna need a very old style computer. Um, I bought this computer online. Uh, I think it was like a hundred, uh, right now it goes for like 120 or $150 for a set. Uh, there's these guys on eBay, Amazon, uh, Walmart even, uh, Marketplace. Uh, they'll, uh, they have like whole inventories full of old school, uh, you know, computers and stuff that they're reselling. And that's how you're able to get it for really cheap. And it's a pretty good price. I mean, $150 for a computer, monitor, keyboard, a mouse, everything you need. But again, for that system, you're spending $150 plus this. This is only $5, you know, so that's the best advantage of this. But again, you're spending over $150 on the rest of the components. So at the end of the day, the day you're still spending a lot of money. So then you have uh, the second options, which is uh, uh, this, NVMe, which really isn't an option. But it's something I tried. Um, and there's some uh, custom firmwares that people have designed. I forgot the name of the firmware. But anyways, there's it's 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 not a a well built ecosystem, I'd say, or well built community. You know, it's something that's very niche. And if you're really, really into programming, fine. But for most of us who don't want to waste the time, don't want to waste the money, then you know it's just not worth it. I've also tried a Raspberry board. Um, and the reason I started going towards Raspberry and these smaller computer options is because I don't like how big in energy consumption this is. I'm a bit of a lazy person. I don't like to, you know, turn off my computer, turn it back on, log it in, reboot Linux NT, etc., etc. You know, I kind of like to just leave it on. And with these small computers, they consume basically no power. Uh, so, and especially this Raspberry Pi. So that's why I went with this option. And this is a Raspberry Pi 4. I think this goes for like 40, 50 bucks. Uh, if you can get it, uh, especially in the past few years, those, uh, these things have been almost impossible to get. Uh, but yeah, so if you're able to get it, it's around 50 bucks. But the problem with these is honestly, it's pretty laggy. It's, you know, you trying to interface and it, you know, that has issues. And you can't connect directly to these pins, but that, you know, especially with a plasma cutter, it has some risks. So then you need an attachment board that typically goes for another 40, 50 bucks, uh, you know, in order to isolate the pins from the CM, uh, for the CPU, you know, so it's, it's 
again, added costs, and it's just not worth it. These Chromebooks, I do really like these Chromebooks. Uh, you're able to get them for like 20 bucks uh, off eBay, and you can easily flash them. It, it will not easily, but you can flash uh, you know, Linux onto them. It is doable. So I would look up uh, the Chromebook that you're buying, and if it is uh, flashable, because some Chromebooks are a lot more difficult, and I wouldn't, they're not just not worth the money or time. So let me go finally now explain Fluid NC and why I ended up with this. So the biggest advantage of Fluid NC is like I said, it's all web interface. So what you do is you upload the files over the internet onto the board and then the board runs it itself. And that's how most 3D printer boards are nowadays. Pretty much you upload a uh, file to them and they run the code themselves. And I, my entire, you know, career because I've been actually this has been part of my career I've worked for companies doing this and I've always found it frustrating how there's no modern CNC software that has this capability and I know this sounds crazy but most CNC softwares still use breakout boards some of them yes they use uh, Ethernet but still it's a ridiculous system why did they use it because back in the day they didn't have you know, really compact, really uh, smart computer. So this big machine was the computer. And that's actually how this breakout parallel board works, right? This doesn't have any, you know, cal calculation powers. All it does is convert this into a, a technically, you can wire it directly into this, but then you're gonna, you know, damage this computer and there's voltage issues. But pretty much you could te technically, all the, this computer says, uh, uh, to turn this pin on and that turns this uh, that moves the stepper motor right so this pretty much does all the calculations and it's 2024 and we have amazing of uh, microprocessors we have amazing small computers that are super cheap and the fluid NCs uh, goes based off the ESP uh, system now what I did was buy a maker base board this is a MKS DL uh, 32. However, what I suggest instead doing is actually just buying a Fluid NC predestinated board, and I'll drop down a link on the board I'm talking about. And that's you know specially designed for uh, uh, Fluid NC. It's open source. It's created by the community, and again, it uses the ESP32 uh, microboard uh, system, which is just dirt cheap, and it runs all the code on itself. It is an insanely amazing uh, piece of device for its cost. And I want to show you how easy it is to, you know, uh, start up Fluid NC. So we're just going to plug this in. As you see, it's starting to boot up. And on our web interface, uh, I already did this, but we're going to put in the IP address. Wait for it to load. There you go. Connecting to ESP32. There we go. Oops, there we go. But it is moving. I should probably stop that because I have no clue how long it is moving. I just need to calibrate. I literally just, you know, plugged this in. But yeah, I am uh, happy as you see it is churning. So, I mean, I literally just, this is the first time I've ever booted, booted this whole lot system and put it together. I'm so, you know, live on camera, as you see, very easy to set up, very easy to do. And even over here, um, you're able to actually set up the uh, configuration. I'm going to start setup, continue, or I forgot, but pretty much you're able to actually set up the uh, steps per millimeter and all that information in here yep there you go so you're able to set up all the information config values yep acceleration steps per millimeter everything you need all through your phone right or just have a tablet so you know instead of having because like i have this cnc machine i have this lathe i have that mill you know i want to do more uh you know cnc components i want to do more cnc mills etc and you know having a monitor for each one having an individual computer for each one right that that's just ridiculous there's so much power so much etc but as you see literally you know all it takes is for me to 
unplug this and boom it's off or I could just even leave it. it it takes basically no power I could just leave it running all the time and add a little relay that comes off of this that connects to all these power supplies that turns off these power supplies you know once I'm done with a click of button so uh, this is I don't know in my opinion that is the best controller system you can use and everything else is just is not worth it so this is the next uh, CNC controller that I've tried, and this is called a Misa card, and they work really nice. Uh, they work via Ethernet, so you still need a you know some sort of controller uh, or some sort of actual computer to run this, and this is really good for really fine, really high accuracy stuff. So uh, especially with lathes because it has indexing, and you know I do agree with that. that you know these these bars are good for that. The one downside and the one very, 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 very big downside that negates absolutely anything that these boards do is the fact that you can't buy them. What good are they if you can't buy them? And this board by itself is $150. Okay, just this board is $150, but again, it goes out of stock almost always, and for me, that's not reliable, because if I want to build a bunch of machines, if I want to, you know, I, I don't want to have to just, you know, be like, hey, when is this, you know, like constantly checking and stuff, I want to be able, right, what happens if 5, 10 years in the future, they just stop making this, right, I want something reliable, something that's open source, and that's why I like fluid and C. So if you enjoyed that video, please subscribe and I hope it helped you in some way. I'll be doing a lot more videos, a lot more uh, tips and suggestions. I've been busy the past few months, but I'm getting back in the groove and getting back to things. I'm rebuilding an excavator, rebuilding my skits here. Probably that's going to be later, but right now I'm focusing on the excavator. I'm rebuilding that. I'm rebuilding a compactor. I just uploaded a video about that and how to uh, diagnose your diesel engine. So I do everything from CNC controllers, fixing diesel engines, chemistry, aquaponics, farming, pig farming, so on and so forth. So please subscribe if you find these things helpful.